In this video, we look at the molecular orbital diagram of molecular hydrogen, H2. Let's draw the molecular orbital energy diagram, or MO diagram for short. The vertical axis is the orbital energy. In MO theory, molecular orbitals are approximated as linear combinations of basis functions that are centered on the atoms. In a minimal basis, we use one function for each atomic orbital. So here, each hydrogen atom contributes one 1s orbital. Using MO theory, the two atomic orbitals are combined to give two molecular orbitals, a bonding MO with lower energy and an antibonding MO with higher energy. Lines connecting the MOs to the AOs, like this, show which AOs contribute to which MO. Just like atomic orbitals have labels, like 1s, MOs are labeled as well. The lower MO is denoted as 1 sigma g, and the upper MO is denoted as 1 sigma u. These labels consist of three parts. First, the Greek letter sigma indicates the rotational symmetry. Let's take the molecule and look along its internuclear axis. A sigma MO looks like this. It is cylindrically symmetric. On the other hand, an MO of pi symmetry has one nodal plane that contains the internuclear distance. Seen along the bond, a pi MO looks like this. And here is the nodal plane. A molecular orbital with two nodal planes is called a delta MO. Next, in the label, the subscripts G and U. They indicate the inversion symmetry of the molecular orbital, that is, its behavior under spatial inversion through the center of the bond. Look at the molecule and compare the value of the MO at the specific location, for example, the top right, to its value at the location obtained by inverting through the center of the bond to the bottom left. If these two values are identical, the MO is symmetric with respect to its inversion and is labeled with a subscript G, which stands for gerade, the German word for even. Here's an example. An MO whose values changes sign under this inversion is antisymmetric and is labeled with a subscript U, which stands for ungerade, German for odd. Here's an example. Third in the label for the MO, there is the number 1. MOs are numbered from lowest energy to highest, just like atomic orbitals. MOs with different symmetry have separate number labels, so that's why I have two ones here. One for the bonding MO indicates that this is the lowest MO with sigma g symmetry. Sigma G MOs with higher energy will be labeled as 2 sigma G, 3 sigma G, and so on. The one for the antibonding MO indicates that this is the lowest MO with sigma U symmetry, and higher sigma U MOs will be labeled 2 sigma U, 3 sigma U, and so on. Lastly, we often add an asterisk superscript to antibonding MOs to indicate that they are antibonding. The asterisk is often omitted. Now, let's fill electrons into the molecular orbitals and look at the resulting species and their electron configurations. The first electron goes into the bonding MO and gives 
H2+. The molecular electron configuration is 1 sigma g, 1. The bond is stable, since the energy is lowered compared to atomic orbitals. Two electrons give H2. The electron configuration is now 1 sigma g, 2, or squared. Since both electrons are in a bonding MO, the molecule is stable. Three electrons give H2 minus. The third electron goes into the antibonding MO and therefore weakens the bond compared to neutral hydrogen, H2. The electron configuration is 1 sigma g squared, 1 sigma u, 1. The fourth electron goes again into the antibonding MO and gives H2 2 minus. Now both MOs are fully populated. The electron configuration is written as 1 sigma g squared, 1 sigma u squared. Since antibonding MOs are usually more destabilizing than the bonding MOs are stabilizing, there is no bond in this molecule. This MO diagram also helps us predict molecules consisting of two helium atoms. Neutral helium-2 has four electrons and is isoelectronic to H2-2-. It is not stable and has never been observed. Taking one electron out gives helium-2+, plus, which is isoelectronic to H2-. Minus. According to the MO occupations, 1 sigma g squared, 1 sigma u, 1, this should form a bond. And indeed, it is a species that can be observed in the gas phase. In summary, we have constructed the MO diagram for diatomic hydrogen and helium species. MOs are labeled according to their rotational and inversion symmetry and numbered by increasing energy. By filling electrons into the MO diagram and looking at the electron configurations, we can predict the stability of molecular species.